back to my channel and today I'm joined by Natalie Flynn over here at Yalk and you just had your first panel at Yalk. How did that feel? It was great. Yeah. Was it weird or was it awesome or a mixture of both? It was weird at first, I was really nervous mm. um, and then once I settled into it, it felt awesome. You know, Luke's a great presenter and he, he was really did fun. such a good job, yeah. you know, of putting us at ease. Mm -hmm. and, you know, the bit of humour, making up the young adult yeah. book plot, you know. That was a lot of fun. Dirty you, sushi. Yeah, you Watch came up with that. <laughs> <laughs> so first of all, can you tell us a bit more about The Deepest Cut, which is your debut YA novel, and kind of your journey to publication? They asked me this in the, in the panel, and I've forgotten what it's about. No, I haven't. <laughs> it's just a bit, it's been a long time since I've really been in the book, you yeah. know, since it's been published. So, um, it's Adam's story, it's always mm -hmm. been Adam's story, and Adam is 17 years old and the book opens three months after his best friend was murdered, he was stabbed in a fight on New Year's Eve, and Adam, he's got no support, he's really struggling to come to terms with the death of his best mate, his, you know, they were brothers. That was the one thing that I loved about the book as well, it's quite... Sad, but there's so much humour so in it be love because of that because relationship of that bond, yeah. between yeah. So yeah, Adam's Sorry. not he's not coping well with it and the only way out that he sees is to end his own life. He's got a bit of guilt that he's dealing with as well, so it takes him over. Thankfully, he's found by Polly, his friend slash girlfriend slash, you know, whatever whatever, whatever, is going whatever on. Is going on between them. And once he's recovered physically, he gets put into a mental health facility to um, be helped and to recover. Um, Adam's so psychologically traumatised that he's completing you and it's not on purpose, he just can't speak, you know, he's just completely shut down. <laughs> so his therapist David says, well look, if you can't tell me and talk to me what, about what happened, mm -hmm. have these notebooks, write it down for me. So you go back as you're going forwards and mm -hmm. the notebooks lead you up to you know, the big night, the, that night, Adam calls it that night, you know. That's the he, it's like you can't even name it he because can't it's name so it. no, traumatic no, for him. He yeah. can't, you know, so it, it leads you up to that night and it takes you through everything that happened. And then obviously as Adam's getting closer and closer to that night, his psychological condition is deteriorating as well. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to give away any spoilers, so that's all I'm going to say. Yes. The only thing I will say is there is, there is hope at the end. Yeah. There is I, hope at the end. I feel you balance it quite well, yeah. the sad and the happy. and. And also because of that, your your side characters just they just have so much spunk and energy yeah. that kind of nicely balances off Adam's kind of journey. Josie's gonna come back. Oh yes, I can't. She won't leave me alone. Josie, I love her. So she won't. She's haunting me. She's <laughs> haunting me, and she's going. I've got this story. I need you to tell it. Oh, that's so once wonderful. I've done the one that I'm writing at the moment, I think I'm gonna. Because she definitely intrigued me. I was oh, like, she's great, Josie. Oh. Yeah, she's she's like, got why? A how lot she? To say. There's so many questions. Yes. Yeah. One of the things that really struck me reading your book, and I actually asked my boyfriend a couple of times, I was like, yeah, you totally were that 16 year old. And he was like, yeah. a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> he How? said to me, it's the bit when they're on the park bench. Yeah, the, the one with the tits. Did you see the tits, tits on Adam? Did you I see know, the tits on her? Did you? And, and, he, and he literally just blushed, and I, I knew what the answer was. Yes. How did you manage to capture their voices so because you did talk on the panel how you toned down some of the swear did, to make yeah. it more readable which is yeah. understandable but you i don't know it, it really spoke to me so much i'm a big eavesdropper i you know i used to sit on buses and i used to go on the top deck and listen you know great school kicking out time bus full of teenagers <laughs> the best you know there's a really good book actually that i recommend all young adult authors, parents read Generation Z by Zoe Combi. You know, she I think she's got another one coming. It's absolutely brilliant mm -hmm. um, for sort of really getting inside their heads and learning what they're thinking. I did a lot of research as well for the deepest cut. But the main thing with the deepest cut is that it was a play first. So I've seen these three boys mm -hmm. in front of me. Yeah. And when we were in rehearsals as well, we were walking down the street one day and I said, get into character. And they did. So I was walking down that the street so brilliant. with Nathan, Jake and Adam and I went into the sweet shop with them and we walked down the street and we got on the tram, you know, and they were in character the whole time. I was obviously going, oh my god, oh my god, <laughs> but they were in character the whole time. So 
dialogue for me was easy in the deepest cut because it was a play because I'd already written it as a play and because I knew those characters so well I started researching it really shows in the writing your your dialogue really just jumps out yeah. it's really cool yeah. that makes so much more sense to me now yeah. all of a sudden. <laughs> but the pressure's definitely on for the next one you know yeah. to get that voice as, yeah. well, as well for the next one so mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Because Adam is a real person in my head, you know? He's still out there somewhere, you know? He's still out what there. What do you think he's doing now? That's a really good question, actually. Or, or do you want to wait with that for a future book at some point? No, no. I think Adam's done. Adam said all he needs to say. I'd like to think that Adam's out there somewhere with Polly. And Just that, a nice, quiet life. Yeah, happy. yeah, absolutely. That he's, you know, perhaps he's playing his guitar a little bit more. I'd like to think that he's, he's cool. He's obviously going to miss James. He's always going to miss James. But I like to think that he, wherever he is, he's dealing with it. And then he remembers the good times because they had such good times. Yeah. I, I think with traumatic events as well, it's, it, it's easy to let it overpower any other memories you have of that person mm -hmm. yeah. because of the, the way they were taken from yeah. you. Yeah. I'd like to think that Adam still does their Christmas Eve movie extravaganza. Oh, yes. With Heidi Line. I think because yeah. Polly kind of. I think, I yeah. think Polly will she'd be it. up for yeah, that. She, yeah. I think she'd make him do it, yeah. wouldn't she? What does your average writing day look like? <laughs> writing or, do you, <laughs> or do you have an average I writing know. day? I have, um, I have a very small child that I'm in charge of. <laughs> um, and he requires a lot of energy. I'm really lucky because my husband is a film director, so we're both self-employed, so we kind of share our time. I, I do most of the main childcare, so I get a day each week where I can write. And that I just, I've got an office, which is great, so I go up to my office, I lock myself in, and the whole day just as long as I'm not having one of my apparently now infamous writing <laughs> I am leading the way for writer's meltdowns. It's important. As long as I'm not having one of those, then that is a day that I'll probably do half the day on, you know, contacting people, emailing about the deepest cut, arranging school visits, you know, chatting to librarians and whatnot. And then, you know, the, the rest of the time I'll be writing. I do take a few evenings out as well to write. You know, I, I do tend to work better in the evenings as well. Mm -hmm. so. so yeah, it just depends. I mean, when you've got a small child, it depends on how you feel and, and where how you can like steal the time. As yeah, well. exactly. I think just don't put pressure on on yourself, and I just it will get done when it gets done. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. kids are hard work. I don't know. I don't have any. Kids, but <laughs> apparently, you I've know. got a teenager and a toddler. <laughs> oh, so you have like the best of both worlds <laughs> yeah. kind of thing. So we talked about already that you may have some plans for Josie. Do you have any other plans for any other YA books? Yeah, my next one is set at an illegal rave. Very sort of disjointed group of friends. And they go to the illegal rave with one of the friend's sisters. An ecstasy pill is taken. And by the morning, the little sister, she's 16, and she's on one of their living room floors convulsing and foaming from the mouth. And it's told from two different viewpoints, mm -hmm. and it's told over the 24 hours of that mm -hmm. happening. Yeah, don't make will. me cry too much. No. <laughs> at the moment, I still don't know how it's going to end. I don't know. I, at the moment, I haven't decided whether or not she's going to make it. I know. <laughs> I might do like an inception ending, you know, like with the oh, ring. I might do that really where know. people like, they're just going to put the book down and go, oh my god! And I'm going to be one of those annoying authors. <laughs> just decide for yourself. Oh. <laughs> Alright, we're going to end with some quick fire questions. Uh -oh. I only promise them to be short, not that okay. very easy. What's your favourite word? Sushi, apparently. Um, <laughs> I don't know, that's really hard. Well, I, I also asked what's your least favourite, so you can think, think about it for a little bit, yeah. Which is not too long. No, I don't know. <laughs> There's a lot of words I can't pick one. There is a program that scans your manuscript and does like a word count of the most okay. popular words. It's a brilliant tool and literally was the word in the deepest cut that I had overused. I had to go out and delete all of his. Yeah, but literally. So that was my word I used to say. Oh, Cake's a good it's word. It's a good one. Yeah. It's a really good one in my opinion. Chocolate. Yeah. All good words. Very good yeah. words. <laughs> What's your least favourite? What I get a lot is moist. A lot oh, of people, people like hate that word. I'm not bothered by I it. Do, I don't. I don't mind but it because so many people hate it. I love saying it just to annoy. <laughs> Maybe that should become your favourite <laughs> word. Moist. <laughs> What's a characteristic in a character that you love, either to read or to write? Just, I love open heartedness. I love it. I love it when you know the love and the authenticity of the character jumps out of the page. Mm -hmm. I do think that that does show in the deepest cut. I think mm -hmm. Adam. Like I say, in my head, Adam's real, you know, and he's authentic and he is, you know, 
I think authenticity and being real is something we can all strive for a little yeah. bit more. And not just in characters, but as in, in people. Life. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. What's a characteristic you hate? Or that you find very difficult to write? I did find it hard to write a couple of Adam's mental health peers. Because I think because I was worried I was going to get it wrong. So is it the superficiality that you don't like in a character? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I'm very much a, a person that will, if I re start reading a book and I don't connect with a the character within a few pages, yeah. I will You're drop it. Yeah. Yeah. And the same comes with writing. When I'm creating characters and I'm, you know, I'm doing these maps, these mind maps of characters and interviewing my characters on paper when I'm getting to know them. If I don't connect with them, they're gone. You know, yeah. You're not afraid to kill darlings. No way. <laughs> you know, well, like, you've gone. You might use you at some point. So yeah, but not for this. But just yeah. sit over there for a minute because it's not your time yet. You're in the corner. Yeah. You just, you just <laughs> put on your, your ears yeah. and yeah. done. What's a book that you would like to recommend to everybody? I'm going to say two that, I, that have really got me mm -hmm. recently. Because I find it really hard. I have like, time to read and while I've still been writing. But um, Am I Normal Yet? I'm going to be born. Mm -hmm. Read it in a day. Brilliant. And asking for it by Louise and Neil made me so angry that I threw the book across the room. Which is point. actually a very good reaction, yeah. I feel. Yeah, I was like, Whoa, like I, I'm angry, I'm stuck, I just need a minute. She's not afraid to say it either, no. is she? And like, along with the sort of authenticity yeah. subject, you know, I think we could all do with a little bit, bit yeah. more than that. So, yeah, those are the two young adult books that have really, mm -hmm. really spoken to me yeah. recently. And I know that it's so cliched and predictable, but The Alchemist is a book that just completely changed me. That was a book that set me on a spiritual journey to really become friends with myself, you know? And he's an incredible author. I would be so yeah. starstruck. Oh my God. I'd queue for so, hours. Like, look so, at the young yes. queues, but I'd queue for hours yeah. just to meet him. You can come back and read it at different points in your life. It's very different. different I reread it for, to yeah. make that video, and I was like, oh my God, this is a different book to me now. There's another one, actually, along that lines. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. Jonathan Livingston Seagull by Richard Bach. Oh. It's a great metaphor for getting away from the flock, again, beating yourself, being okay, who yeah. you are. You don't have to be afraid to be who you are, you know? And again, that was a book that I read and really stayed with me as well. I recommend everyone reading. I think it's one of those good ones for Yalk again, because I yeah, feel, absolutely. as we said earlier, that Yalk is a place where bookish people yeah, can be their girls, selves yeah. and be unapologetically enthusiastic. And comfortable that's, in their own yeah, skin. Yeah, because that's what being a geek is. Yeah. And I think it's one of the best things you can be because if you can't be enthusiastic about the things you love, like what are you doing in life? And I, yeah, this is why I'm an unapologetic fan girl. Yeah. <laughs> well, you don't have to apologize for being passionate about exactly. things, do you? So. What's your favorite Harry Potter character? Do you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to, no, I can't do it. Everyone's gonna hate me. I've never read Harry Potter. That's fine. <laughs> That's okay. I, Harry Potter came out at the I time don't that hate I you was, now. I know, but everyone on Twitter is going to be like, you up. <laughs> Sorry, we've exposed you. Now. I know. <laughs> you know what? Let's be unapologetically authentic. Exactly. So Harry Potter was really big at a time where I was a very young single mum and I was working full time and I didn't have time to do anything, let alone read and yeah. get into stuff. So, you know what? I will read it because. I'm going to read it with my son when he, as he's growing up. You know, we're already doing our collection of books, our Royal Dial books mm -hmm. and stuff. But I will come to it. And you know what? I, I guess that I'm a lucky one because I'm going to come to it for the first time, aren't I? A time in my life where I will be able to appreciate mm -hmm. it more. But obviously, I do know about Harry Potter. I am a physical Hufflepuff. From what I know, the, the, I'm not going to say I've watched the films or not. <laughs> but I, I think it's one of those things, though, whereas in. I feel even from the films, there's certain archetypes in the yeah, characters. Absolutely. I think that's why I usually ask this question because it's mm -hmm. I find it very interesting who people pick yeah. and the reason for which they yeah. pick them. You identify as a Hufflepuff, which yeah, I think is absolutely. interesting yeah. because I feel like it's such a cultural thing, even mm -hmm. if you haven't read the books. Oh yeah, you've like, got a house, haven't you? Oh yeah, yeah exactly. But regardless of whether it's how you identify read, as a person. Yeah. Everybody knows Harry Potter. Everybody knows the stories of Harry Potter. Yeah. you know, and um, it's going to be exciting to read it with your son, though. Yeah, that's. Yeah, and I am looking forward to I'm looking forward to going back to all the classics that I loved as a kid, you know, but I am really looking forward to reading Harry Potter with him for the first time, you know, because it's, it's a full circle for me, you know, yeah. with my elder son, 
you know, I just, we were so busy, you know, we, he was too young, I was too busy, you know, like I yeah. said, I didn't have time to read the paper, let alone a book. And that will be the good time for that. Exactly. <laughs> Final question for today. If there is any other genre apart from the one that you're writing at the moment, which one would you like to attempt and then be supremely good at? I don't know if you can call it a genre as such, but I'm a very spiritual person. I do believe fiercely mm -hmm. in the afterlife and there is a book in me that will come out at some point and, you know, it will be that sort of thing. So, like alchemist type kind of thing? Yeah, like not so much supernatural, but more sort of philosophical, mm -hmm. spiritual down that route basically cool. and the sort of thing that Hay House would publish you know down I, I don't know if you can really put a, ja a genre on it but I think you'd see it on a Hay yeah. House stand but regardless of which I will always write my A because I just love I love teenagers I think they're great I like you get the people like oh teenagers I'm like they're awesome <laughs> they're the future yeah and they you, really are you know you they're just they're full of love and passion and they're feisty and, they're and they mouthy. talk about what they're doing yeah, yeah they really do I was and we were all like that once oh yeah me. so yeah I'll always write for them and I'll always work with them in workshops and school visits and stuff which is <laughs> best best part of the job thank you so much for joining me today so thank you guys for watching and leave any comments for Natalie down below in the comments. I'll talk to you all very soon. Bye! You've exposed my Harry Potter. <laughs>